Should you be using tension when aiming? If you ask the internet, they'll tell you no. This has puzzled me for years. How could tension, something that is core to my understanding of aim and key to my own aiming ability, be so unanimously vilified? Perhaps this is the hill I'll end up dying on, but I believe tension is gravely misunderstood and heavily underutilized. When used correctly, it can elevate your aim to new heights with unparalleled speed and precision. But if you don't have control over it, it will sabotage your aim like nothing else, which is likely why it gets such a bad rap. Relaxed aim and tensed aim can be described by what is known as the speed accuracy trade-off, where when you do something quickly, you make more errors, but take less time. And when you do something slowly, you make fewer errors, but take more time. In aiming, speed inherently requires more tension, while accuracy requires less, but not zero. There exists a sweet spot between both speed and accuracy where you can find an optimal balance of the two for the task at hand. For aiming, this Goldilocks zone will change depending on what you're aiming at. While it's not quite this simple, we can essentially break that down into the two categories of tracking and flicking. To help everyone get on the same page, let's measure tension on a scale of 1 to 10. You should feel tension from your hand all the way up your arm, one being totally relaxed, at 2, you start to see some muscles and tendons very lightly engaging. At 3, a little more so. By 4, the muscles are visibly engaged and while you aren't shaking yet, and they should feel still, you are on the precipice. At 5, there is a slight tremor that becomes more obvious when moving around. You may not actually see the tremor, but you can feel a subtle vibrating sensation in your muscles. From 6 to 10, the shaking becomes more intense, and 10 is where you can't tense any harder. Before I get into the juicy stuff, we also need to get on the same page about smoothness. It's often considered the end goal of aiming, and aim training in particular. While I don't necessarily disagree with that, I don't agree with how it is associated with, or even synonymous with relaxed aim. You absolutely can have smooth aim with tension. With that out of the way, let's learn how to use it. The first principle is that your tension needs to be dynamic. You don't just stick to one number and hold it there, it must adjust to suit the current aiming demands. If you're just walking around, you can sit at a leisurely one or two. There's no sense in wasting energy or fatiguing your muscles outside of engagements. When you enter a fight or suspect you're about to fight, you switch on that tension. For tracking, your aim is optimal at around three to four. You don't want any shaking or vibration in your muscles. This will negatively impact this type of aim. So it's important to learn where your threshold is. In easier tracking situations, like if a target is slowly moving in a straight line, you could drift closer to a three. Against faster or more erratic targets, you would move up to around a four. Flicks are very interesting. The whole point of them is to quickly move your crosshair onto a target so you can begin damaging them as soon as possible, or for mitigating the effects of an enemy's movement. A flick shot essentially lets you pause time and get your crosshair onto them before they can move away. This is accomplished through speed. During a flick, our crosshair moves much faster than the enemy, and as we covered earlier, speed requires tension. An effective flick shot requires a temporary flash of tension. The intensity depends on how far you have to flick. Generally speaking, we want most flick shots to happen in the same time frame. So the further you have to aim across your screen, the more tension you'll need to speed up that flick shot. This will also depend on your mouse sensitivity, where the lower it is, the more tension you'll need to execute it within a viable time frame, as you have more mouse pad distance to cover. Due to these variables, I can't give exact numbers, but smaller flicks may flash to 4.5 to 6, while longer distance flicks could flash up as high as an 8. It's important not to hold this increased tension between shots, it should only be applied to the flick itself. The second principle is your mouse grip and the concept of control. The higher your tension is, the more control you need over your mouse. Without proper control, the tension is misdirected and wasted. I have a full video on how to grip your mouse linked in the description, but for now, I'll cover what's important for tension. The goal for each point of contact is to grip toward the mouse sensor. That's not exactly true, but it is a good reference point. The thumb knuckle applies pressure this way. 
the pinky and on some nice shapes the ring finger knuckle 2 will push this way and the rest of the fingertips are pulling toward the center. This seats the mouse very securely in the hand and lets you direct your attention toward moving the mouse sensor exactly where you want it to go. Ultimately, that's all that aim comes down to anyway, moving that sensor around. This grip style can often lead to the mouse sitting at a skewed angle in the hand, but you'll quickly get used to compensating for it, or you can fix your sensor rotation with Raw Excel, which I've also covered in another video that's linked below. If you are committed to fingertip, palm, or a claw grip without the thumb knuckle in contact, you may need to tone down the tension a little. So a 4 might become a 3 or 2.5. The third principle is avoiding panic and tension creep. If you're the type of player that can land your shots and get the enemy low, but you just can't finish them off, it often comes down to tension creep, where you grip tighter and tighter the longer a fight goes on, or the more important a shot is to land. He's one shot, he's low. Mouse, what, what are you doing? Stop, stop! No! No! You might start out at a comfortable 3 or 4 and land some great hits, but as the enemy gets lower, that creeps up to a 5 or 6. You get shaky, panicked, and start whiffing everything. Fortunately, this is easy enough to address. My favorite approach is so easy that all it takes is two words. Be deliberate. You can use this like a mantra, a reminder, whatever. Anytime you start to feel that panic or shakiness creep into your aim, simply remind yourself to be deliberate. The game isn't being fast forwarded, you don't need to rush or frantically spam your shots, keep breathing and keep doing what you did to get them low in the first place. Tension has been unfairly but understandably coupled with panic and stress, while calm and collected gameplay is associated with being relaxed, when in reality you can have the best of both worlds. Deliberately adding tension into your aim won't magically dissolve your calm and collected mindset. And it's important to remember that this tension is only present when actively aiming, and there's plenty of downtime in most popular shooters. The panic and stress is triggering your fight or flight response, so your muscles fill with blood and tense up, ready for action. This tension isn't deliberate. It's happening whether you want it to or not, and if you're not in control of your tension, it'll sabotage your aim rather than enhance it. If this is something you struggle with, I have a video dedicated to turning that panic's response into a superpower, which is also linked below. Somewhat ironically, the final principle is to slow down. Tension has a way of accelerating your perception of time. Let me give you an example to see if it sounds familiar. When you add tension to the mix, and you try to track a target that is AD strafing, it might look something like this. Instead of smoothly aiming left to right at a consistent speed, you're essentially just flicking between two spots. When you're tensed up and aiming quicker, it can feel like everything is moving faster, leading to overly reactive and twitchy aim. So long as you aren't using excessive tension and shaking, there is no reason you can't still track smoothly and at a consistent speed. Just because you've added some tension doesn't mean you can ignore other crucial aiming skills. You still need to focus on your target, read their movement, and gauge what mouse movements are needed. My favorite method for dealing with this is to break down target movement to its most basic form, strip away all the art, sounds, visual effects, and so on. If an enemy is AD strafing, they are moving left to right at a mostly consistent speed and distance. To aim at that, I just need to be able to draw left and right at a relatively consistent speed. There's no way I choose to flick left to right to draw that pattern, so why should my aim in-game be any different? When you perceive enemies to be moving faster than they actually are, you give them special treatment. It's like you believe they can move in impossible ways, which is why you're flicking all over the place to keep up. So slow down, read how they're moving, and prepare your mouse movements to paint over them. You may find that the Be Deliberate mantra can help with this too. If you would like to directly support me in making more videos, please consider becoming a channel member. It's basically a Twitch sub for YouTube, so you gain access to emotes, badges, and all sorts of perks like a members only Discord, where we can chat about all things aim, gaming, and improvement. If you're interested, there's a link in the description, or depending on your device, there may be a join button below the video. Let me know in the comments below what level of tension works best for you. Thanks so much for watching, be sure to subscribe for more content like this, and I'll catch you in the next one.